everyone. It's Nona Grace, and I think my camera's crooked, Jim. You want to just angle it? There we go. Perfect. Hit it I, set until you I know. It. I had to get up, and it's hot in this little room. And I put this little shirt on because I've got spaghetti straps, and I really don't like my arms. So even though Jim says they're fine, I don't like them. So I put a little shirt on, and now we're roasting to death. And he's <laughs> roasting because he's got to be here with me. But I'm going to talk about the 5,000 steps that I'm doing where the other ladies, A Fruity Kind of Life and Simply Pam, which is A Fruity Kind of Life is Heather and Simply Pam is Pam. They're doing 10,000 steps a day where I'm doing five. I'm only doing half. But I'm, it's way more than I was doing. I, um, the first day of the month, I didn't do, I can show you what I, I will tell you what I did on the first day. The first day of the month, I only did 2,978 steps. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, so I'll put it up. But each week, I mean each day, I made the 5,000. I'm going to, and that one I made 7,000 something. That's even better. And back to 5,000 and something. And 5,000 and something. And 5,000 and something. I was supposed to do a video every week. And um, that's close to six. Oh, this is six for today. And today's not done. So, um, but when I did the month, I came to 48,131, which gave me over 5,000 steps per day. So even the day that I didn't get the 5,000, I did enough extra in there to get that 5,000. So for the week, I did 27,819. That was from July 5th through July 11th, which July 11th hasn't come yet. So that's quite a few steps. So I'm just doing it for the month, which would be 48,000 is the number I would give you, not the week, because I'm off the week. I'm not on it. And I don't have a Fitbit. I'm using my little iPod to do this. So that's that's what I was I wanted to cover today about the steps. So if you I want to get out and walk, what I've done is basically I go out and I walk over to the mulberry tree, eat some gooseberries along the way, get to the mulberry tree, eat some mulberries, walk up the hill, around to the neighbor's driveway, across the driveway, into the little bit of woods there that is nice, and then I go back down through that area and then back up to the front of my house and back around the chickens again. And um, I've been getting my steps. That's the only way I will get them because I wasn't walking that much before. I was staying in the house a lot and just going out and sitting in the sun instead of walking in the sun. Now I'm walking in the sun. Um, I also want to mention... The Page Family Homestead, Our Journey Back, Peggy, Peggy and Andy, they cooked a rabbit today. And, you know, I had rabbit when I was growing up. Didn't like rabbit. And the reason I didn't like rabbit was it was the thought of what I was eating. It wasn't so much that the, didn't like the taste of the meat. I don't even know if I liked the taste of the meat. All I could, I couldn't get past the fact that I was eating rabbit. And my mother used to put it a lot of times in soup with a chicken, and she would tell us that that's, oh, that's just chicken. And Well, you could tell the difference in the meat. The meat is a little different in color, but it probably tasted the same, but I don't know. I just swallowed it whole because I didn't want to know I was eating rabbit. But you didn't like meat bad. I didn't like meat at either. all. No, I didn't like meat at all. But the thing I did like about the rabbit was my dad used to give us the rabbit foot. Remember how lucky a rabbit foot is? Well, I used to have a real rabbit foot. And he always left the little tendon on there. So when you pulled the tendon, the claw would go like this. <laughs> it, was, it was fun. And then as the, t as the little rabbit foot got older, the tendon would get stiff and then it wouldn't pull anymore. And so we'd have to wait till we got another rabbit foot. We also liked pheasant feathers. We used to put them in our hair and think they were just beautiful. Um, but anyways, Peggy and Andy, they roast, they cooked uh, rabbit on the barbecue, I believe it was. 
I think it's how they did it. And it looked really good. It looked really good. I used to love watching my dad clean the rabbit, too. And, you know, you just skin it, like skin the cat. No, instead, you just skin the rabbit. And that's how they did it. I also want to mention Frank and Tina Adventure. Um, Adventures of Frank and Tina is how it goes. I said it backwards. And the reason I want to mention them is I forgot to mention that they were, they are also um, judges for the Shed Wars. And I, I promised to talk a little bit about that in my comments because there was some that said that they, had, they didn't know what the Shed Wars was. Well, the Shed Wars is actually a lot of YouTube channels that have gotten together. You saw the list yesterday. The list is huge. And there's, I think, five groups or four groups. I don't remember how many, how many groups were in it. But the object of this Shed Wars thing is to each group of, of channels are supposed to try to see how much they can grow to be self-sustainable or how much how much food they can grow. You don't need a shed. Just grow food. And they're also supposed to teach you something in their video that will um, help you that maybe you've never farmed before or maybe you've never grown something before and you will learn from them. And they also will teach you how to preserve food. And that's what the whole Shed Wars thing is. I don't know how we're going to judge it. This is really going to be a difficult thing because I have watched a lot of them. And I have four things that I look for in the videos when I'm watching them. I don't know what the other judges look for, but I look to make sure that the video that they're making is inspirational, educational, informative, and entertaining. Now, if it hits all those four points, I really should be writing these down when I watch them because I've watched several. And some of them had hit three of those points. Some of them hit four. Some of them really didn't hit any. But um, they were good videos, just the same. But those are the qualities that I'm looking for in the videos. I don't know what the other judges are going to look for. And then today, I also, because I'd like to do either a FaceTime or a Zoom talk. Zoom chat. Chat or whatever with them. I did a FaceTime chat with my sister and I did it where I had my sister and my son and me and we were able to do it and you can add up to like I think 28 people or some crazy number so if they have an Apple device chant and can Ooh. do FaceTime then I could do FaceTime with them and we could have a chat and we could decide how we're gonna figure out how this how we're gonna judge these channels because there's a lot of them and also, I wanted to mention that um, Frank and Tina, they also do a weekly video that kind of gives you a highlight of some of the videos that they've watched. And Frank is really good with his editing skills. He's, it's, it's fun. It's, he does it like he's a radio commentator or a TV news program. And it's really interesting how he puts them together. I just love it. I, I really am impressed by his his um, computer skills and editing skills. They're really good. I checked on Silver today. She has five babies, and they're all the light yellowish, which some I was asked also what color are the buffs when they're babies. I think they're kind of yellowish at first yellow and they sort of brown and up they they tan up a little or they buff up a little whatever the color buff <laughs> they get that color as they grow so i don't know exactly i know there's two eggs that she's actually gotten off the nest so those eggs probably aren't making any sound maybe there's nothing in them i'm going to leave them there until tomorrow and then i will remove those eggs and check to see what was going on and they probably have nothing in them Let's pray there's nothing in them. Not a half-developed chick. Because, oh, I hate it when I crack them open and that's what I find. But they're, you, they're dead inside when if that happens. And let's hope it's just a rotten egg with no smell. Because <laughs> they're really stinky if they have a lot of smell.
Um, I think that was everything I wanted to say. Nursery rhymes. Huh? Oh, nursery. What was I going to say about nursery rhymes? I forgot. Hmm. Oh, when I mentioned the penny, I think I remember. <laughs> When I mentioned the penny thing, I was surprised how many people had never heard of checking your tire with a penny. And it reminded me of when the kids were in my daycare and I'd have parents calling me wanting to know this nursery rhyme that I was teaching the kids because the kids wanted them to tell it. And I was like, I thought everybody knew these nursery rhymes. I'm only doing the ones that are really known, like Jack and Jill went up the hill or little Bo Peep lost her sheep or little Miss Muffet or um, sing a song of sixpence a pocket full of rye I wasn't doing little Polly Flinder sat among the cinders little Polly Polly Flinder little Polly Flinder sit among the cinders warming her pretty little toes well her mother came and caught her and spanked her little daughter for ruining her nice new clothes that's how that one goes. I don't know if you know that one or not, but I won't do it, but you could look it up. And if you'd like to hear Sing a Song of Sixpence, I would do that one for you on another day. So that's my video for today. And I hope you all are staying cool or staying warm, whichever. And I'm going to remove my my blouse that I put on to, to hide my arms. I don't like my arms. They're pretty arms. They're not arms. I have boy arms, and I don't like my arms. So They're athletic arms. <laughs> they're boy arms. <laughs> they're athletic. <laughs> well, you can say what you want to say. I know what I know, and I don't like them. <laughs> so that's it for today, and I'll talk to you all again tomorrow. So you have a great night. Bye-bye.